So this little phone here is the Galaxy S24. Regular, just the S24, not the Plus, not the Ultra, and this is the smallest and most affordable in Samsung's new flagship lineup. But it still offers the same powerful chip and, and many of the same features as the S24 Ultra, but at a fraction of the price, which makes it arguably the best flagship for most people to buy. So first of all, even though I'm calling this the smallest of the lineup, it's still not a small phone necessarily. It's 6.2 inches, which is 0.1 inches larger than last year's 6.1 inch display. And it's definitely not a tiny phone by any means, not an iPhone mini or an S10e, but comparatively, it's a tiny phone, right? Because Samsung's S24 Plus and the S24 Ultra, which launched simultaneously with this phone, and I actually have videos on each of those, so I'll link those below, those are way bigger. You're looking at 6.8 inches on the Ultra and 6.7 inches on the Plus. Like 6.2 is, is much more manageable for anybody who has smaller hands or smaller pockets or just wants a phone that weighs 28% less than the Ultra. Now, I don't have particularly small hands, but I still love smaller phones because they're more pocketable, more fun to use, and in general, why wouldn't you want better specs in a smaller body? And so, I was really excited to get this phone. And in addition, I also really love boxy phones. And over the past couple generations, the S series has been getting a little more boxy every single year, and this one is no exception. So I absolutely love the design of this. It comes in four different colors. There's a black color, a gray color, which I'm a big fan of, a yellow, which I'm, it's okay. It's not really my color, but it's cool. And there's a violet color. Now the violet I think is actually probably my favorite out of this lineup. And one little interesting note here is that these are not the same colors as the Ultra. So the Plus and the regular S24 both have the same four colors, but for whatever reason, Samsung made like very subtle color changes in the Ultra. I don't know why they did it, but they did. One thing that I do like that they all have this year is that all three of them have a flat display. So before Samsung kind of like waved it over your head saying if you wanted like the curved uh, sort of bezel-less looking display, you had to get the Ultra. And I think they finally realized that a lot of people do tend to prefer flat displays. So we're seeing that across the whole lineup. And so it kind of makes it feel even a little more unified yet. So the S24 doesn't look like a cheaper version. It doesn't look like not part of the flagship. Like the whole lineup looks really nice. It looks like a continuous lineup. Like you know you're buying a flagship here. The first compromise, however, that you will see with the S24 regular is the resolution of the display. But I would argue it's really not a big deal considering the size of this display. It is smaller than the Ultra, of course. So FHD plus being essentially a 1080p display, uh, like it is going to be a compromise we would expect, but not really a big one at that. You're still getting 120 Hertz dynamic refresh rate. You're still getting an AMOLED 2X display with vision booster. So overall, like a really qu high quality, a really nice vibrant display, just a little bit less resolution. And then flipping over to the back, we have a really nice, simple design on the back. Some people would call it boring. Personally, I'm a fan of, of this style for the phone, uh, especially for the S lineup. Just, I want it to be a functional phone that, that really performs well, but, but still looks elegant yet simple. And so we have three cameras on the back. These actually have the same specs as last year, 12 megapixel selfie lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 50 megapixel primary, and 10 megapixel 3X telephoto lens which, I mean, Samsung at this point has been doing very well with those lenses. I wouldn't expect any other lenses on this phone. And I think most of the improvement we'll see with the cameras is going to be on the processing side with the newer chip on, uh, on board here. And so we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But kind of in line with that, what I was saying about software in this phone, one of the biggest new things with this phone is going to be the AI features. Now, AI is such a buzzword, we've been hearing it so much, but Samsung actually did add some really cool things with in this phone and kind of their tagline has been AI for all. And I really found four main features that are, are baked into the UI now that are within this phone. And so the first one that I think was, was really quite impressive uh, is essentially circle to search is what they're calling it. So if you're using the camera or anything on your gallery, uh, any photo you want, you can simply circle whatever you want to search for and it'll search based on Google Images essentially and tell you a lot more about that. So it could be great for identifying plants. Maybe you're at a market, you don't know what a specific fruit is. Uh, you can take a picture and circle it and identify what that is. If somebody's wearing like some really nice shoes you like, you can take a picture of them, circle them, it'll help you identify what shoes they might be. And it's like this example here, uh, I was just using like during my hands on time, a picture of a cat. 
from the gallery. You can circle the cat, it'll identify uh, what it believes to be that type of cat, it'll tell you what it is, and as you scroll down, they tell you a lot more about it, they'll tell you how to care for it, they'll tell you where you can adopt one, and you can also add more information to your search. And this isn't like something brand new, like I understand this has been around, but it hasn't really been as baked in as we're seeing right now. Circle to search is really a cool feature, and I'm happy to see that on here. The second one that they have is a lot more tied into uh, actually like messaging and text and stuff like that. So chat enhancement is essentially if you're texting somebody and you're typing, you type out a message or really what I do is where I think I would use this the most is like voice to voice to text. So if I just talk to my phone, it puts it down as text and, and like I tend to speak a little more casually than I would type. So for example, if I use speech to text, I talk to the phone, maybe I'm texting my boss and I want this to be more formal, I can tap on the little AI button. And this is really the button that you'll see throughout the interface on the new UI here. Uh, you tap on this and it gives you a couple options. One of them is going to be translate, one of them is check spelling and grammar, and the one that I think is most interesting is change tone, which can essentially uh, say like, hey, change this from a formal thing to less formal or from informal to something funnier. It's not always perfect as you can see right here, um, but it's new and it's a feature that I think could provide some benefit here. Something that I struggle with a lot when I'm texting people is um, sometimes people think I'm like really angry when I text because my text can be pretty blunt. So I think I'll try this and, and see if that changes anything um, or maybe, maybe it makes it worse, I'm not quite sure. But the third thing that is kind of the AI for all, as they're calling it, uh, feature in here is translation. And you can translate between languages from many different media types, from uh, from calls and texts and voice recordings. Uh, so for example, in the voice recorder app, uh, you can automatically transcribe everything. It'll separate it by which speaker. So if you have like an interview with two people, speaker one, speaker two, and then you can add that to Samsung Notes as well, or you can just translate to other languages so that other people can, can really understand the same stuff without having to paste into Google Translate and do it like that. And then lastly, kind of extending that previous example, when you're in Samsung Notes then, if you scroll down to the bottom and you tap just anywhere to type, you'll see on the keyboard that AI button once again. And so this gives you some more options. One that I really am interested in is AI Summarizer. So if you have like a really long lecture maybe and you recorded it uh, and then you transcribed it, put it in your notes, at the end, you can just say summarize it. It'll give you a quick little summary of everything from within that. Uh, and it just, again, makes it easier to remember and digest different information. So again, there's a lot of ways you can use this kind of generative AI uh, and other AI tools as well, but that's how Samsung implemented it here. I'm excited to use it a lot more once I have this phone for a little bit longer. Inside this phone, however, there are some interesting components here. So the battery is going to be larger at 4,000 milliamp hours versus 3,900. Again, we have a slightly larger display, so I don't know how much of a difference that will actually make. But once I have this phone for a couple more weeks, I'll make a follow-up video much more in-depth, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Uh, additionally, we're getting a newer chip on here, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Like I said, the same we're seeing on the Ultra. Really, the highest flagships out there are using this chip right now. This does have 8 gigs of RAM, which is a little bit less than the Plus and the Ultra, which have 12. And this has 128 or 256 gigs of storage, Again, limiting a little bit on the storage. You can't go up to 512 or a terabyte for the more cheap, affordable option here. I don't really think that's a huge drawback. And this only has 25 watt wired charging compared to the others like the Plus and the Ultra, which have 45 watts. Not really a huge deal. Again, smaller battery anyway, so not a big problem for me. And uh, I usually charge wirelessly anyway. And this has the same uh, fast wireless charging 2.0 as well as wireless power share on the back. But really, Arguably the biggest one that I think is going to matter for this phone right here is Samsung's promise of seven years of security updates, which is great, and more importantly, seven years of OS updates, which means that if you buy this phone now, it'll still work, theoretically, in 2031. And I think that that's, that's kind of a, a pitch that for the Ultra users is interesting, probably more beneficial for them in value retention, so their trade-in value is higher, but for anybody buying the S24 regular, I have a feeling this is more of a, a thrifty crowd, people that wanna buy this and, and really wanna use the same phone for a long time. And I think that seven years is going to be a much more exciting number to anybody considering the S23 regular. So personally, I think this is going to be the best regular model phone we've seen some, from Samsung probably ever, uh, if not in a very, very long time. I love the design, I love the longer OS updates, uh, I love that it has the latest specs on here, and I think it's just, a, I'm excited to use this a lot more. I think it's going to be a really popular phone, 
And uh, if you guys want to learn more about this, definitely subscribe. I'll have a, a one month later video or a two weeks later video coming after I use this phone for a little while. And of course, like I said, if you're interested in possibly a slightly larger phone with quite a few upgrades as well, I also made a video about the S24 Plus. I'll, I'll link that right here. They're coming out at the same time. Uh, so be sure to go over and check out that video next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in that video.